Welcome back to the No Idea channel. Uh, this is our third video on our DIY cart dyno build. Um, it's a little bit rainy outside, I'm in a tin shed, so I do apologise for the noise. Uh, what we're going to do today is have a quick look at some of the changes or add-ons that we've made to the dyno to try and get it working correctly, um, and have a talk about why those were necessary. We'll do a quick run, uh, and then we'll spend the majority of the time on this thing, having a look at some of the AIM software uh, and how we can use it to get the data that we need. Alright, so this week's modifications are all about one thing, and that is actually measuring the horsepower output with our dyno. Some of you who use a Micron 5 and know a little bit about them already will say, well, that should be really simple because in the software that comes with the Micron 5, um, which is called Race Studio Analysis, there's a horsepower measuring function where you can just look up a graph of your horsepower and talk. For those of you playing along at home, it's called the Engine RPM Analysis and it looks like this. That doesn't work in our situation because that's set up around taking your cart and driving it down a straight surface, turning around and driving it back and so on and so forth. Essentially that software is working the same way as an inertia dyno would. So an inertia dyno, if you remember right back to when we started talking about dynos, was a dyno that basically just measures how long it takes you to spin up a big heavy, uh, big heavy weight uh, using the horsepower from your engine. The Micron software is kind of the same, but instead of having that big heavy weight, it says how long does it take you to accelerate down the road and it makes its calculations from that. This dyno that we've built is a second type of dyno, which is a power absorbing dyno. So that simple engine analysis function on the Micron software won't work for us. So we need to find some ways to make some measurements of horsepower and here's how we're going to do it. Everything else is still the same. We've still got the pump. We've still got a restriction valve. We've still got our reservoir. What we've added for this week is a way to measure two things. To work out horsepower through a hydraulic system, we need to know the flow of the pump at any time. And we also need to know the pressure that we're putting the restriction to. So that'll tell us the horsepower that the engine is producing. The flow of the pump is pretty simple. We know this is 30 mils per revolution, so we can make some uh, mathematical calculations based on how many times the axle essentially turns. Pressure is a little bit trickier. What you usually use is a pressure gauge. Uh, this is a digital one. They're really good, really accurate, but we need something that we can feed back into the Micron system uh, so that we can graph this horsepower. So what we've got is a pressure transducer. Um, this is basically just a pressure sensor. Um, it takes pressure up to 200 bar in this case and turns it into a DC signal, so a voltage signal that goes from 1 to 5 volts. Um, that's a signal that our Micron can read, even though this isn't a Micron branded sensor, um, we can custom wire this into the Micron, or at least that's the plan. So we've got one of those mounted on before our restriction tap. That way we'll be able to see at any time the flow and the pressure, and these two things can be converted to help us work out what the horsepower is at, at any moment. Uh, other add-ons for this week, uh, some simple ones, we've got ourselves a little radio fan, um, try and keep the radiator cool. It is <coughs> very easy to get extremely hot, um, the way these pools work, you know, your dyno pool can go for 20 seconds or more at full load. Uh, so full load, lots of RPM, produces a lot of heat really quickly. So we'll try and keep it cooled off during and between runs with the fan. Uh, we've also got ourselves a little breather on our hydraulic tank. Uh, not sure how needed it is, but we'll put one on just to be on the safe side. And we've also got our laptop ready to go. So we'll do a couple of runs. Uh, and then we'll look at the data we collect uh, and crack out the computer and see if we can come up with a graph or two. Okay, so this is after a couple of back-to-back -back runs. You'll see that the fan is on cooling the radiator. Uh, essentially what I'm doing here is closing the valve right in. 
Uh, the idea is that you close the valve enough to make a restriction where the engine will no longer increase RPM. And once I've done that, I'll put the accelerator to 100%. And then from then on, I'm not varying the accelerator at all. The increase in RPM is only coming from opening up that needle valve. So we'll keep opening until we go right through the RPM range uh, and stop somewhere near maximum RPM. So now it's time to hit the computer. Here's a basic graph in race studio analysis. Uh, the red line is RPM uh, against a graph of time. So we can see there are two large peaks uh, where I performed a dyno pull, if you like, uh, and the smaller peaks in between are low revs uh, cooling the engine down. Now this is a bit too much information for us, so we need to use the zoom function and we'll grab one of the peaks and zoom in. So I've done that now. Uh, this now has us with a minimum of about 4,000 going through to the maximum of uh, 15,600 RPM. But I'm not happy with the bottom end of that graph. Um, it's a little bit bumpy and I think it will cause problems. So we'll zoom in one more time. This is the graph we're going to have a look at now. It's 8,000 through to the 15,600 RPM. Okay, here's where it gets a bit tricky. Uh, the great part of this software is it allows you to customize your own channels based on the math that you create. Uh, I won't bore you with what the equations were. One, it's really boring to listen to, and two, lots of them are probably wrong. Uh, so I'll look into it a bit more before I tell you what they are. First off, we've got the blue line here. Uh, this is simply the pressure transducer or the sensor that we put on the dyno rig this week. So in this small part of the RPM sweep, you can see uh, the peak is up near 4,000 millivolts and it drops down from there. We then take that information and make a custom channel uh, called dyno pressure. So you can see that's on the same slope as the millivolt sensor, uh, but this one is reading in bar. Once we've got that, uh, the only other thing that we need to work out our horsepower is our dyno flow. So that's the green line here. Once again, that's created from some maths uh, on RPM and the volume of the hydraulic pump. Once we've got those two things, uh, being the pressure and the flow, we can then make up a new channel uh, called the dyno horsepower, uh, which is here as the orange line. Uh, and that's our horsepower, final horsepower, as a product of pressure and flow. All the graphs we've seen so far are against time. Uh, what we'll be more used to seeing when we're tuning vehicles or carts or anything else with an engine uh, is a graph of horsepower against RPM. So that's what we've got here. You can see the left-hand side of the screen is blank. Uh, that's because the section of the curve we chose only started at 8,000 RPM. So that would change if you chose a bigger curve. Uh, now this is a really useful tool. Uh, by itself, we can see the shape of the horsepower graph. Now I've added in the blue line. Uh, this is our lambda curve. Uh, so in this case, you can see the lambda curve takes a dip down at around 11,000 RPM. Uh, the lower number from the lambda indicates a richer condition. So that's something that can be very useful in your tuning. And the last one I've popped in here, uh, this is our water temperature from the cart, but we can add in any sensor we like. That's enough maths and squiggly lines for today. In our next episode, we're going to look at some issues we're facing regarding maxing out our pressure transducer uh, and the flow of our hydraulic pump. Uh, but until then, please make sure you like and subscribe to the No Idea Racing YouTube channel uh, and give us a follow on Facebook.